Hey everybody, it's Brian here from quantlabs.net. I'm going to show you uh, the most up-to-date uh, code examples that I'm going to show you with MATLAB uh, of 2013 moving into 2014 uh, with uh, Garch. Um, I'm looking at Garch for a variety of reasons, but uh, I've talked about Garch many times with my R analysis and past uh, MATLAB analysis. so. Essentially, I'm going to be using this as my second most popular model forecasting uh, method out there. Uh, it is easily not used at all that I've seen by retail traders, let alone do they know what it is. So over here at Investopedia, they define it. It's just the acronym of Generalized Autoregressive Conditional Heteroscedasticity. Uh, I'm not a mathematician by no means, and never I will be, but this is why I use uh, Investopedia. But, a statistical model used by financial institutions to estimate the volatility of stock returns. Um, and uh, the information is used by banks to help determine what stocks will potentially provide higher returns, as well as forecast the returns of current investments to help in the budgeting process. What we're interested in is, of course, the word volatility. Volatility brings opportunity, right? So, because uh, under uh, MATLAB uh, and R, I know, I know there's like all these other different variations of IGARG, NGARG, whatever. I'm just focusing on pure GARG, okay? So, what I've done is I've snooped around looking for any examples. So I found this one example here, which I'll show here in my uh, MATLAB uh, 2013, is uh, basically, uh, I'll put this link in somewhere in the blog or something so people can see it. But essentially, this is what we're gonna do. Uh, it's very simple, but this is kind of important, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load in all our, uh, in this case, currency data of the mark versus the pound. It's kind of old, but whatever, right? Do what we call a price return, uh, which is right here. So we're going to take a price and turn it into a set of returns. Of course, with the fab uh, documentation, I'll let you read it, dig into it. I don't want to spend too much time on that, okay? So back to our tutorial, that's our first step. So we calculate our returns from the prices, calculate our length of the size of that array. I'm going to debug this as we go through. I'm just going to walk you through, okay? Then what we're going to do, now this is the key of this chart right here. I'm going to put another uh, 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 segment in this video demoing uh, this video, uh, which is really daily returns exhibit volatility clustering. So here's the plot. That's how we generate it. Create a figure, create a plot, create our limits, uh, and then give it a title, blah, blah, blah. So again, this is a volatility clustering plot. Now as you can see, as you can see the disturbances here, something may be going on in uh, this uh, plot. Now, depending upon how you want to chart it, how you want to make uh, trading decisions, this can be very helpful to use it as an indicator. Just saying, especially when you can see it can be used in the world of currency or Forex or FX, depending on how you like to talk about it. So let's get into the actual uh, GARCH calculation. Now, the previous versions of Garch uh, have been somewhat changed around in MATLAB. I don't know when they've done that, but I'm going to do another script that shows the legacy way of doing it. It still works under uh, MATLAB 2013, uh, but I'll, I'll show that, that in, a, in, a, in, a, in another segment of this video. But essentially, uh, what we're doing here is let's take a look at the uh, Garch uh, tutorial or the breakdown of what it is. Now, what's changed in the recent versions of Garch uh, is not a lot, no longer a, a function like with Garch Pred and all that. What, what MathWorks have done is they've now turned it into a class. Okay, so what we can do is we can pass in basically these parameters: the Garch lag, the arch lag, and the offset, which is not being used here. It's just different ways of showing different ways to generate this Garch one one model. Um, another way is to do the P and Q. So basically what these uh, parameters are 
Uh, again, I'm, I'm not a mathematician and I'm not going to try to break it down as easy as possible. But as you can tell, the P is non-negative indicating the number of lag conditional variances in the Garch model. Okay? Q is a non-negative number indicating the number of lag squared innovations included in the Garch model. Okay, so what does that mean? I'm going to let you figure that out um, because I don't want to get too much uh, detail into it. But uh, if we look at this particular example, the Garch lag, uh, vectors of positive integer lags uh, associated with the Garch uh, coefficients, Garch lag, uh, vector of integer lags associated with the Arch uh, coefficients, okay? Um, so it's just basically two and one, and when you run it, you will get this uh, return data put into the fit and the log L1. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then you get all those T statistics, the standard error, the value for each type of parameter here. And then the other uh, generation uh, code that we're going to do is a simpler version of it. Uh, oh, forgot one step here. Okay, so once we pass and generate the model that we want by setting the class uh, then we uh, estimate using that model and passing in the return data from our price to return okay right here and uh, basically what will happen is uh, I believe it will generate this data as I explained earlier now this other example here is Garch 2.1 I explained earlier, but we're actually just setting it up differently. Two and one, the P and Q uh, offset of this is not a number, so we're not worried about that. And then we're doing another estimate, the same return data, and we're going to get a, another set of data. Now, this is kind of interesting because um, let me uh, take introduce you to this L ratio test. I think it's this one, L ratio test, likelihood ratio test of model specification. So when you look at uh, where we're, we're passing in the log 2, this one right here, and the log 1, and uh, let me just see what that third parameter is. Uh, degrees of freedom, I believe it is. Uh, so we've got 1 as the degrees of freedom. Um, and uh, what we return here on the output is uh, H, the rejection decision of the likelihood a ratio test conducted at a significant level uh, of let's say alpha but we're not passing that um, and uh, the other thing that we are working with I believe is stat take a look at our example here yeah so it's, it's stat log L2 uh, so output 1 2 3 so optimize likelihood objective function value don't ask me what that means <laughs> I'll have to dig into that um, but let's let's run this program here so I'm here in the uh, MATLAB editor MATLAB 2013A for those that like to geek on and uh, I'm going to clear out all the data just to uh, start over I guess and then uh, uh, quit our debugging uh, okay yeah, I got a good idea double monitor action going on here Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint, load the data, run. Okay, so you can see the workspace is empty. Once that uh, data is loaded, you'll see some new set of data. New data at Y, which is the pricing, all this, all the pricing of that data uh, of that currency file, the mark and pound, and. Um, Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to do a price to return, as we mentioned earlier, which is R. And uh, here's our returns. Ooh. Okay. 
So now we're going to generate the volatility cluster uh, plot. There you go. And we're going to do our first example on the Garch 1 1 model that I explained earlier. Now, remember, uh, we are um, essentially, uh, looks like I messed up here. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to generate this model one using these parameters of the one one as explained here. Let's do that. So what does that data look like? So it's doing that right now. Uh, here's the data of the parameter standard t, t, yeah, t statistic, all that stuff. And now uh, we get we we've run our estimate at the same time. Okay, so um, our model is this as we predicted. Those are the parameters of the model on the returns that we uh, calculated earlier. And now we're going to estimate uh, using the, the, the Garch model. So what did it generate? Uh, here's the data, the constant, offset, and then the log L1. Now what was that L1 here under the estimate log L1? Uh, where is it? Here we go. Optimized log log likelihood objective function value. Hopefully somebody can comment and just make it less PG PhD sounding like, but I can easily find that out. Uh, so this is what we can work with from our C sharp for the trading decision if there is a trading decision. Um, but uh, let's get back to the editor. So now uh, we've got our fit, we've got our log likelihood uh, parameter value. So now we're going to do the second example of uh, Garch21. Let's run that and generate a model. I'd like to show the data so people can see it. You see the P and Q of uh, 2 and 1. And uh, the offset is not a number, that's what NAN stands for. So we're going to do the same estimate with the same returns, and let's see what happens. Okay, so there she goes, did the estimate. There's our fit. There's a log L2. Now we're going to conduct a likelihood ratio test. Um, hang on here. I think, uh, oh. Let me just set a new breakpoint here and rerun everything. And inadvertently um, uh, enable, clear the breakpoint, and of course save and run. So off she goes. Uh, doing all the calculations we did before. So now. Here's our H, because I think we ran this. Maybe we didn't. The probability is there, the p-value. Um, and let me just do, just to make sure, step. That, yeah, it just ran. So it did run that. And it's the same as before. There's our uh, log L2, log L1. And with this 1 being the degrees of freedom. So that's the script we just ran. So there you go. So you can maybe pass back whatever data you like back to your C-sharp for the trading decision, if there's a trading decision. But my mind, to be honest, is all this GARCH is very useful, but the real power is just calculating the volatility cluster. Um, that's what I'm kind of interested in at this point. Um, and then using the GARCH data um, and uh, trying to uh, calculate uh, this for potentially a trading decision of some kind. Other than that, I'll talk to you later. Bye.